Welcome once again to the uh, Spincast Cycling Show. I'm your host, Brian Kellison, with Lisa Vries. And that's it. No, Poor Brian. Brian got called yeah, no, into work. Yeah, he got, he's on call. He was on call. So he's in work. He's he's at work, but he got called into work. Uh, and so he wrote a list of a bunch of stuff. So we're going to get into it. But I I did want to tell you, we were just talking, we were just talking about this off the air, but I did a uh, time trial, the uh, the one and only time trial of the calendar year that usually successfully goes off in my area. It was a new course for me, but I guess it's a old course that a lot of people have been doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the Calaveras time trial. Uh, I got third out of three. Uh, in 35 plus, uh, I got beat by the guys that beat me last year in the 35 plus thing again. Uh, this dude who won, good dude. I, I we have a uh, whatever first and third, the third, the second guy place guy didn't show up for the podium. So, which is his teammate, but I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head. I'm forgetting it. Uh, but he is super lean uh, and climbing really well. There's not a big climb in this time trial, but the thing we're talking about is. I am so big right now, which is a good motivator to go, man, you really need to get back into it. Uh, and you were saying that you do like races, like gravel races, and then there's like a pro photog and they take a, well, if we want to show the pro photog thing, I could try to find the link. Uh, Katie Mew, she, she took, there's two photographers usually out uh, at the races and stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm going to check myself out. Cause I, I was, I kept the same position, new skin suit uh castelli new new skin suit like i got a killer it's my district champ uh skin suit but it's like the pro ones made in italy because castelli our, our custom order they were like oh well, we'll just upgrade you to the other one we'll get it done because it was delayed a little bit it fit so tight luckily i could fit into it <laughs> but yeah. it is really high tech and it i love it so now i want to do time trials and i have one left which is the district so trying to repeat as a district but I am so big, so I need to get fast, quick. Or Isn't it the funny, the, the little that things? fun is that, fast. That make it, you know, you give you motivation. Yeah. You know, like you don't really feel like riding your bike and you get a new skin suit and you're like, bring on the time trials. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ride did, them all. I did uh, sub 25 minutes. Uh, I think the winning time was like 22 something. So I was like two minutes back. Uh, and I felt like I could have gone more, but I was so gassed. I don't even, I haven't even looked at my numbers. So we can go look at our numbers, look at my numbers if you want. Uh, but it was just a test. One, it was to race in the kit because I hadn't raced in the kit before. Uh, also to set a, set a sort of a, uh, a test for the, the uh, districts in August 31st. So that's my goal. I'm going to start training. So I've actually looked at like, okay, how, what kind of, pro, let's, let's get into like a program. Let's do a training program. Maybe I can meet my goal, re, reach my goal and just, just, re, you know, hammer it out and like peak as well as I can for this event. Right. So I've been looking at system Wahoo system because not so much fitness, but actually the core strength and the yoga stuff to get more flexible, to get more into an arrow position is what I want because I could feel my, uh, your hips, your yeah. hips in that arrow hips. position. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know that your glutes are supposed to be the one you should activate your glutes, like that sort of thing, like activate your glutes. Right. But I, I need to get more, you know, my arms and get more, get into, cause I can get into a pretty arrow position. Well, not as arrows I possibly can I, with the bars and the bike setup I have, but I should, I was feeling my hamstrings, my left hamstring was feeling tight. I was like, oh man, because I hadn't been riding at threshold for that long. So now I'm trying to get more flexible and system actually of all the, all the training programs out there, system has actually one that has off the bike stuff. I don't know if trainer road does, and I know Zwift doesn't, uh, if there's any other training programs out there that have like off the bike stuff, like there's even mental training. So, and you, you have a system, do you still have the system subscription? And I it gave you this, a, yeah. Cause you had the year Wahoo RGT, I still, yeah, I, I still, the Wahoo X, essentially it's the yeah. Wahoo X. Yeah. Actually, no, it's expired. So it expired. So when Zwift gave you the free year, so the system subscription still Stop. stayed. Oh, it did. Yeah. yeah. It stopped when it was supposed to stop. Oh, so you, you did the year, you did the annual Wahoo X. I thought that was like September, 2023. 
No, no, no. September of 2022, I think, right? Yes. Because the annual was cheap. It was like you got RGT and system. And, system. and it was like under 10 bucks Canadian yeah, yeah. for a year. Like it was a really good deal. Yeah. So I'm looking at system. I think I'm going to do system. That or... Well, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I think off the bike training is totally neglected because... I have a bunch of buddies for years. They all go to the gym and they're like, you got to go lift some weights. You got to go do some strength training. I'm like, come on now. And I started going to the gym like one day a week. And I was shocked at the difference it made. Lifting heavy ass squats and yeah. deadlifts made an unbelievable difference of my riding, which is funny because you're doing like three, four, five sets low reps and i'm trying to sort of do mostly endurance riding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but so you wouldn't think those two would correlate but it does massively all right well I, that's my contemplation is like okay i think i want to do this because i want to get more flexible and i want to do a uh, core stronger core i do some core work uh, at night uh but getting some structure and if you do like you plan it out, you're like, oh, I want to reach this, reach this goal. Like you, I looked at the plans, like you can do your own thing. You're like, oh, I want to do this. And it kind of runs you through it. It's really good tutorial to kind of like, oh, I want to do reach this goal. And I want to do, a, it's a road race and it's a time trial. What do you want to do? Oh, I want to do like a uh, hour and a half a day or something like that. Or like seven to seven to five hours a week or seven to 10 hours a week. Do you want off the bike training? And do you want mental training? Like it asks you those things in the little kick down. And I was like, damn, that's really good. So I think when we're done with the show, I'm going to fire up my, re up my subscription. Well, and sometimes you need it in the calendar to yeah. get you motivated to do it. And when they yeah. just filter in like today is a go to the gym day and you're like, okay, sure. Yeah. Tomorrow yoga, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you, you don't have to think you just say, what do I'm, what am I doing today? Oh, today I'm biking yeah. and I'm doing this workout. No problem. Jump and, on the trainer. Yeah. And it, it's like, it shows you the time of like, how much is the off the bike? Like, let's say you do like the first, like Monday is your whatever yoga day and a bike ride. Like you have a, you have a training yeah. session for like an hour or 45 minutes. And then you have like 15 minutes and it shows you the total time of the, of the different workouts they want you to do. I'm, I was, we haven't been talking about it because it's not, it's not like trainer. It's not like, excuse me. It's not like Zwift or the virtual cycling but it's part of a virtual uh, program that you can overlay because you've done system and I've done system. You, I used to overlay it on top of RGT because it was a better layout. And you, it's like sort of this uh, transparent background. And so you can use it with other uh, apps and that'll go into what we're talking about. Most of the stuff is Zwift, Wahoo, and IndieVelo. And we have topics on that. But also, I wanted I, we wanted to talk about Ruby. But let's. What do you want to get into first? You want to get into Zwift? Let's talk about Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Okay. Yeah. So, I've been talking with Bjorn uh, off of. Uh, uh, he's been evaluating it, and I I looked into it as well. This is months ago, probably back in January. I was like, oh, maybe I was doing you know get into this, and they've done some improvements one of the biggest things is obviously the world builder thing which we, we talked about i think last week or was it yeah and yeah. i signed up for the beta signed, for i need that. to sign up for the beta but there's on the bike and off the bike rewards or like it it, tr it tracks your career this is what bjorn was kind of evaluating there's like it it's taking your outdoor rides and it's like giving you the the it used to give you coins i remember this it used to give you like coins like ruby coins and so your off the bike work goes into Ruby as well. So it's like a, it's like a total career, not just a virtual career, or like career building, like personal career building, but not like uh, more like uh, FIFA. Like if you go outside and if you play an outdoor match in uh, whatever on the the fields with your friends, or it's like a semi league or whatever, a rec recreational league you could take that and bring that into FIFA and make it on your character to make your character better. I think that's kind of a simulate or like a, an analogy that we could use or an example. So I'm looking at Ruby more. I think I'm going to do Ruby too. Check it out just for like well, the I racing. It's come a long building. way. I used Ruby way back in the day and it drove their avatars kind of drove me nuts. 
but yeah. it looks the like video, they upgraded the video, them. Yeah, the video is a little... Well, like, the video, the problem with the video is there was a lot of user-submitted video. And the user-submitted video is not the greatest, but no. action cameras have come so far that if you slap like a Hero 11 to your bike with horizon leveling, yeah, the video is going to look freaking fantastic. Yeah. You can swerve all you want, and the video is going to be rock solid. Yeah. So I'm going to fire that up again. Uh, I'm interested in it. And then I'll sign up for the beta as well. But then you're thinking, okay, that's four platforms. And I said this, I think I said this on my stream a couple, like last week, because I did a couple streams last week. And I said the Dark Horses might be Ruby. Ruby might, because you're getting, there's in-game incentives. There's virtual roads, which real video, so it cannot, it won't get as static or stagnant, excuse me. And you can, you can now sort of like, uh, GPX build a world, right? With, and if you have video along with it, you can add that, right? It doesn't, it's not doing like a virtual world. It's doing a video world. So you, you sent, it takes what, 24 hours or something like that. You send the GPX and you send the video along with it. And they'll populate it and build it for you. I think that's a dark horse of like, hey, this is sort of like, we're kind of focusing on my whoosh and Zwift because they have the the bigger events. And then Indie Velo is this, the upstart sort of like challenging them. But Ruby's been pretty established. And it was kind cool. of that fringe, be cool Ruby that was sort of like second tier. I think we talked about this when we first started the show, where it was like, there's Zwift, and then it was like second tier was like RGT and my whoosh, and then Indie Velo, and then it was like these other, you know, like the the full gases and the B cools. Well, Ruby is sorry, I think started moving up, moving up a tier. Yeah, that, that's the problem is juggling this many. It's like, who, what do you ride? Why do you ride it? You know, typically people ride one. The people especially only want to write, especially yeah. if you're paying, especially if you're paying. Yeah. See, my pay for one, and they'll pay for one. Yeah. So you pay for one, and then you ride my whoosh because it's free. Or, yeah. <laughs> so you, you're not going to be paying for Zwift and Ruby. You know, so it's either going to be like Ruby my whoosh, Zwift my whoosh. You could pay for. Well, that's the thing is if, if so, would events be the thing that you would be wanting to pay for? Like you, I, I keep. Let's just say I, I'm keeping my Zwift account because I'm doing races, right? I'm not doing yeah. it for anything else other than races and events. And I have Ruby would be that sort of thing. Same thing. Yeah. And I've sort of haven't done any races. I mean, I race nationals, but as far as that, I just free ride. I do yeah. workouts and I do workouts controlled from like my head unit. So I'm just using yeah, the program just a... for scenery. Yeah, and Zwift is nice because I mean this graphics are decent, and there's a lot of other people. But I mean, Ruby, why not? I could key up the Sea to Sky Highway and ride to Whistler. Mm -hmm. You know, real video. Yeah, I did start to sort of appeal to more of what I'm doing, solo riding. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, and they seem like a development. They, they seem to be continually developing instead of like some of the other that, that fell to the wayside, you know, it's, it's like, there's a, there's a full board team. They're putting stuff out and they're developing new stuff. Right. Well, I think every time a new app comes up, you're kind of always hoping in the background that is this the one, is this is the one that's going to, you know, take over. And then yeah. they, most of them seem like hobby projects. It's one or two dudes building yeah. it as like well, a fun little hobby project. And then they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then you never hear from them. Yeah. Well, that's also, that's the thought with Indie Velo because Indie Velo is essentially one person and it's a passion project. And so that, well, that, that'll go into the topic that Brian brought up, Brian White, our uh, co-host who's not here. He said that Indie Velo has kind of been just releasing behind under the hood and behind the scenes stuff. Is it time for them to kind of shift gears and move to a more uh, cosmetic slash graphical update, make it you know more appealing to the eyes? I think so. 
I think, yes. I don't think it can go out of beta with the graphics that it has. No. It's fine for now, but depending on how long beta is, you can't go on for even another year. I think it's got to be like officially released by the trainer season, you know, or midway through this like trainer September. season. Like yeah, because otherwise it turns October. Yeah, otherwise it turns into one of those programs that is just perpetually in beta forever. Yeah. And which is, I mean, it's not a bad thing. You are always going to be upgrading a program. It's always going to have updates. But w- what point do you jump it out of, you know, beta? Because I think that's ultimately the number one thing holding IndieVelo back is the graphics. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's just the number one thing. Well, it's just in general for people, when they look at it, they go, because eh. for the casual user, for the hardcore racer, they can look past that and go, yeah, I'm going to race. The physics are awesome. The racing's awesome, you know, but for like a person who just solo rides, who doesn't necessarily race, they're going to look at this and maybe it's nice and new and shiny and they ride it four or five times. But after that, they're like, yeah, maybe not. I think it's people not being on the platform. Which is essentially it feeds itself. Yeah. It's like, like the you bike need bike. people there to have people there. Yes, exactly. So what gets people there? Is it shiny graphics? Or I mean, my whoosh has proven that that doesn't necessarily work because their graphics are amazing and they're still lacking in the people department. Yeah, they have a great look, but their gameplay and dynamics which tough. indie velo the gameplay and dynamics is fantastic so maybe once you polish it up a little bit that starts attracting people because they go wow this work this game feels awesome yeah it does feel awesome when i race the bots it feels awesome and the more and more i do it the better it gets i've i've, I've been a founders club member since they announced it and i even re-upped my founders member and i've ridden in indie Velo like four times <laughs> like i appreciate what those guys are doing and want to support that because i really like their vision but as far as like a user goes it's still not in my yeah you know the category of if i'm going to jump on and ride it's kind of low down on the list what would what would make it would it would it be the graphics like if it looked if it looked amazing yes because uh, like i say events i over the last year and a half do less and less events indoors i'm more like the problem is is a lot of the events indoors don't lend itself well to what i'm trying to accomplish the rides that I'm doing in the real world are like 200K, 220. Like I'm trying to go for like the more endurance, mm-hmm. ultra endurance distance type events that I've signed up for. So yeah. doing like a 30 minute Zwift TT or ZRL race is not, doesn't meet my training plan. My training plan is like, no, don't do that. So I'm trying to avoid doing that because I get sucked into it. I totally do. If I join up a group event, I'm like, next thing you know, I'm going way harder. And that's why I usually do workouts because it controls myself because right. it's not me controlling what I'm doing. You just let it, you want it to be, you want it to be controlled when you're doing your. So for me, sport. I'm doing a workout that's controlled by say like my Karoo 2 is controlling the workout. I am looking for visuals. Mm. I want to stare at the road. I want to stare at the mountains. I want to pass riders. You know, I look at people's jerseys as I pass them. And, you know, so for me, that's totally the number one thing that I'm looking for. That's almost sort of what I've leaning towards my whoosh because the visuals are amazing. The physics suck, but I don't care about the physics because I'm doing, I'm doing ERG workouts all the time. Yeah. So when I raced, I might have a completely different opinion. Yeah. But you usually currently are using Zwift more still because you still have the free or not the free. You have the you have the May of like 2025 or something like that. Zwift, I hope you're not listening. Yeah, right. Screwed up. Well, they raise the price on you, but then you're like, I'm not paying. 
And so you canceled it, but then you held on to it. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't, who knows what happened? All right. So what, what is the thing, uh, you were playing, you were playing that video, the Zwift ride video. So there's like a marketing thing. I've been watching the Tour de France in, uh, the United States and the, the national broadcaster has rights to it and they're playing full ads during the Tour de France. I've watched very little Tour de France, but I'm, su I'm not surprised that they're pay playing full ads. That seems to be what Zwift likes to spend money on. Yeah. Probably ridiculously expensive ads rather than fix stuff that needs to be fixed. Yeah. So this is probably a buy they've had for a while before the interviews that happened with uh, uh, Raymaker. I do have to say, not indoor related, but the last stage finish was freaking amazing. On Tour de France? Yes. The one today? Or the... No, the one yesterday. Okay, yeah. That was some... I only watched the highlights of it, and the tactics on that was unbelievable. It was amazing. That's very cool. Like, they... Yeah, I remember, these, I, yeah. They sent when they... When he sent Adam Yates up the road... Yeah. And they're like, why is he Adam Yates going up the road? And then he bridges and then uses Adam Yates to pull him. And then mm -hmm. he attacked, like, holy crap. And then yeah. he was like, yeah, we just made that up as we were going up the mountain. Because they were like, was yeah. that planned? And he's like, no, we just thought it would be a good idea in the moment. Like, See, I'm wondering like, if you can do that in virtual. Like, does that happen a lot in virtually? I don't think it does. I think virtually... Ah, oh, everyone, no one likes to take risks. And I think Casey brought this up before, and that's why he liked racing the AI in Indie Velo, because the AI will attack you. Yeah, right. You have to counter, or you have to attack them. Where a Zwift race typically is, everyone wants to sit in the bunch, and no one wants to do anything dumb, because if you do something dumb and it doesn't work, you might not do well, because now you burn matches. So but these everyone, are free races. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, you should be, this would be more chaotic. It like should be. Swift and like more like uh, real, real uh, attended races, right? Real I mean, people crit races attended. where it's one attack after another over yeah. and over and over. You real attack in and the next attack would go. And it was teammates doing repeated, constant attacking yeah. in Swift. That would be awesome if that happened because the problem is, is like you would wouldn't know if they're really trying to stick an attack or they're just trying to do it to make you counter and waste energy. Yeah. But you'd so, think in a 35 to 45 minute Zwift race that that would happen all the time. Yeah. There's not like I was in a race. Was it uh Sizu S I S U. And it was, I, th I thought, it, you know, in the, there's no more Zwift labs, uh, ranking point point ranking what do we call on what it's not categorization it's like race, race ranking racer, yeah, race, race ranking. ranking is it race ranking races oh god like that so there isn't any of those really after like three o'clock on pacific in your pacific so i don't know what their bias is for like just running zwift oh. lab stuff all night can't you pick up the data in the morning i mean what's going on West Coast always gets shafted yeah. on the race so times. I'm doing like a regular race. It's a B race. And there's a couple attacks here and there. And then there's like, uh, there's people that are strong enough to like kind of form a group. There's like six or seven ahead. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to try to bridge. I'm not going to try to snap the draft. I'm going to drag all of the four or five people that are kind of dangling off the back. And I dragged them back into it just to put an effort in. And then there was no counterattacks. People just kind of step, kept going, and I haven't been training, so my heart rate was like super high, and I was like, I'm not going to be able to hold on very long. But there's no ta there's no real tactics in some of these races, where I would you'd think maybe in the race ranking point, race ranking races. I don't know, what, I can't remember what we just just discussed the uh, the calling it, but wouldn't that be like, hey, I'm going to risk risk attacking to get away so that I can score more race ranking points, but then people are like, oh, I'll be conservative and not do it. Isn't that supposed to like, isn't this like Zwift, uh, what is it, the the dynamics, the uh, pack dynamics was supposed to encourage people to do things that are not typical Zwift, but I think the mentality hasn't changed still. 
No, it hasn't. Um, and that's, I think, maybe a learned thing because people still think it's the same pack dynamics where the almighty blob ruled. But I think for the most part of that, it's just a lot of people in Zwift don't necessarily have race experience or haven't raced outside before, you know, to get that experience to know that's, that's why they need bots. They need they need racing bots. They don't need pace bots, and they don't need the robot chasing the the uh, the group or whatever they did with the Miguel and Durain thing, or the pacer bots. When they're just locked in their set wattage, it's not dynamic. That's where I think it would. If you do a race where it's like, hey, this all these bots are going to do these re re really r unique race tactics and attack counterattack. And if you know it's a bot counterattacking you, you're like, oh, I can get away with a bot and then see if I can stay away. But it's like, you just race. That's the thing is like people, that's the mentality hasn't changed and people aren't racing well, I think in a tactical points, sense. Well, I think with the point system, it could, because the idea is still to get high ranked as possible, but you might end up getting people looking at who signed up in their race, who has what points and be yeah, like, I gotta be... Okay, so can you see the points in the in well, the signups? I don't think you can at this point, but that they almost need to add that in the signups. You should be able to see everyone's points in the ladder system yeah. of where they're ranked. And if you drop out of a race, do you lose points? Totally should, hundred percent. Do Unless, you? Oh yeah, I would. No, I would no, no. gladly. Do oh, they? You're, I'm not asking point, you. They should no, or should at this point. Well, I've as far as I know, no, because talking with Casey, he was saying dudes would like stop pedaling with one K to go because they didn't get a good lead out on their sprint and, and they, they weren't gonna win. Out, and they're not losing and they would point. drop out and not lose their Zwift point power ranking. Because Zwift Power has its own like ranking system. Cause they were like, I'm ranked number one in in you know United States of America, but they didn't finish that race and they're still maintaining their ranking. No, if you don't finish and 10 people beat you, you lost. Mm -hmm. Like you lose points. You DNF, you lose points. Yeah. It should be if you complete the first kilometer of the race, like that's the only time. The first 1K. That is when you get to DNF. After, if you've completed 1K, you better start hammering. Don't go in a race if you're not going to race. That's the problem with these dudes is they're like, yeah. oh, they, everyone just recovery keeps race. signing up for races. Yeah, yeah, there's no recovery races. And maybe that would make the racing better because guys would bring their A game to the race. Maybe they're not going to race seven times a week. They're going to be like, Friday night, I'm going to be recovered and rested and I'm going to hammer on these dudes. Yeah. Because everyone's racing fatigued because they race every single freaking day, yeah. which is like the other sort of training problem with Zwift and these indoor apps is it's there's always an opportunity to go way too hard all the time. There's never yeah. any zone two in group rides. No, always be pedaling. Always be pedaling in Zwift. So. Hmm. And anyway, speaking of Zwift. Kicker V4, V5. Yeah. Virtual shifting. Apparently, Ray, in either one of his reviews or the interview, leaked it out that the V4, V5 may not get virtual shifting because they don't have enough memory in the firmware or mm. to add the firmware for virtual shifting. Oh. Well, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's Come funny on. to think. It's, it's, I, a, it's, it's, I, I have it's, a V5. Yeah. And it's four years old. You know, it doesn't feel like it's four years old. No, no, no. V5 is 2020. 2020. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's four years old now. V5 is 2020, yeah. Yeah, the V4 was 2018. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we're talking some old-ass trainers here. I mean, the yeah. V5 still kicks ass, but it's four years old. So... Yeah, I'm okay, but, with, I'm okay with Wahoo not... Like, I think they tried... Because they tried to announce it, right? Did, w because if Ray is saying, uh, DC Rainmaker, everybody, if he's saying that, hey, there was possible support, and then, you know, they want, I think the 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 want to support older firmware or older hardware with a new feature, like race mode, 
does race okay. mode show up? Is race is race mode possible yeah. in on a okay. V five? It is. I have on race a V five. Oh, you have race mode on a V five. So and that yeah, you had to have direct connect, I think, to get race mode, which I have. Yeah, because you it's over Wi Fi, right? Yes, it has to be over Wi Fi or direct connect. Because the V five <clears> was <throat> the first one that had the little like plug in yeah, dongle. The RJ nine, I think it's RJ nine. Yeah, the super weird. It's super small. Why would you smaller, use yeah, that? Smaller than the uh, the RJ11, which is a telephone one. It's yeah, RJ11. like why did you do that? Why didn't you just put like an Ethernet? Probably will cost. You have to put a yeah. you have to you have to have a board and then the Ethernet. And so, uh, I remember. I think I was. I don't know if this is uh, official, but like I think there was like the concern of uh, damaging. Uh, somebody, you know, like the power plug yeah. has an easy pull out. There's so creating the dongle or something allows for a a uh, sort of a fail safe kind of like you'll you can damage one thing instead of damaging the entire unit. Yeah. Like the there's like an easy release. If you have an Ethernet, like if you if you yank on an Ethernet out of like a your network port out of your like computer, like your whole PC would move because of the locking yeah. mechanism. Where like a power plug wouldn't do that. So yeah, I think the RJ nine would just like yeah. bust. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I think it was like it was that, and also I'm just assuming this. I don't have any uh, any factual backing on this. The cost of an RJ nine versus pennies. Yeah, is le like less than that. Like like fractions of a cent versus a full RJ forty five connector and then a board and then supporting that. So it's like oh. Yeah we'll have this sort of like, it's like, cause I deal with like old hardware and it's like, you know, you have a 15 pin, like the old D sub pin where you could update firmware and then you have to convert those to like USB now. So it's like supporting something that's easy to get a hold of to, to just update firmware. Well, this is not updating firmware. This is just a communication protocol. And that's the reason why I think it's more of like, yeah, it's like, Oh, we don't have to buy a dongle. Why don't you just do it? It's more of like, it, it's a little bit more because you're walking around your unit and you could you could you could pull the thing out. Like that was one of my concerns with my kicker move when I was working using my kicker move is the power is still the power is still on the back of the unit, right? And then I cook I hooked my uh, direct connect dongle to that. But I kind of uh put some slack on that cable instead of having an Ethernet. So it's actually better to have the dongle than it is to have just a straight Ethernet cable because I have that little slack and the Ethernet cable, I just put like some double stick tape and I put it on the 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 frame or the feet, the leg or whatever, and that's kind of stationary. But the cable moves like the power cable. And so it's yeah. it's a it's better uh wear and tear. Like it's not gonna just like get yanked out. So that's the reason why. And we went way down in the depths of discussing why that's there, but the main thing is, I think the Wahoo trying to support their old stuff to give features to old to older hardware is a great thing, but sometimes it's just not possible because of limitations of the technologies at that time. If you can go back and and do that, that's great. Sometimes it's like you can't do uh, you can't do boot camp on on a new silicone a Mac or what is it, Apple Silicon? You can only do it on Intel because it's in x86 or whatever. Well, and I could see Zwift network. wanting every old trainer to have virtual shifting. That would be in Zwift's best interest because yeah. they want to lock everyone down with virtual shifting. So they would like it. I mean, I don't need virtual shifting. I'm sad that the trainer, if the trainer can't get virtual shifting, I mean, maybe, maybe that Jet Black V2, maybe if it doesn't have the heat issues that the first version had maybe i'll buy one of those because what yeah. are they 3.99 yeah and you, so you, don't want, you, would, you wouldn't want to go to you wouldn't want to go to like a wahoo or a elite oh i would love to go to a v6 or a move v6. actually i would like to go to a move it's just with that other trainer being 400 dollars. <laughs> well in okay. canada it'd be like six the move is like Nineteen hundred dollars in Canada. So, are you considering the Zwift Ride to get the Kicker Core? With doesn't the Kicker Core have the Wi-Fi? No, I don't know what the Kicker Core. I don't know. I don't think so. I think okay. The Kicker Core is no Wi-Fi. The Kicker oh, okay. Core is still like the Kicker Core needs an update, and I think that Jet Black V two 
Volt V2, whatever it is called, came out is going to kick kicker Wahoo in the butt because the kicker core is a fantastic trainer, but it's getting a little old. It is old because it's still like we were talking like 2017 old. Like, when did the core come out here? Yeah. It's still pretty much the same. But it's it's like it's entry level in that sense. It's like getting think of it like iPhones, right? Where you have like the old the old chip in the phone in like the iPhone whatever the low end iPhone. It's got lower specs, but it you know it it can do the job. It can get you on the internet and it can do the things and you can make phone calls and so. The Kicker Core was released in 2018, same as the V4. Yeah. Because it basically is sort of a V4, yeah, with different feet. But yeah, no, I don't know. I like the Zwift Bride. I kind of like the Elite one better. Wait, so the Zwift version of the Kicker Core is still the same hardware as the Kicker Core, the original Kicker Core. Or does it have you? Is it? You sure? Okay. So, I mean, so, it's, yeah, had, it's had it's had multiple firmware updates, yeah. but the actual hardware itself hasn't changed since 2018. It's the okay. same. Oh, this is what I want to bring up about the Zwift uh, uh, commercial that's playing on the Tour de France, which is the, if you, if I don't know if you can find it, uh, it's the one where they, uh, the Matthew Vander pulls at the end of it, where they kind of show the people uh, on the kicker, on the Zwift ride with the kicker, it's the kicker core and the Zwift ride. And they have like the bright lights and it's flashing and they show the different people. And, and it's like, this is what they say in the, in the uh, video. Zwift has a smart bike now. Now, is it a smart bike? Oh, kind of is. Yeah, kind because it has hardware <laughs> on the handlebars. Well, tech. So I would say yes. It classifies as a smart bike, but it's a poorly optioned smart bike. It would be a lower end smart bike because it doesn't smart have frame. adjust. Smart yes, frame. it doesn't have adjustable cranks. It's adjustable with a rent. Like it's. It's yeah. a lower end smart bike. There's some features that are, you know, missing. But I was thinking that the trainer, it gives you an option, but then like you're thinking, you don't really need another trainer because you're, you're essentially, most people, I think that, most people are having, most people are buying, are buying this that don't have a trainer. And they're not buying this oh. to then toss out the old trainer to use it with like, like, let's say I would buy it. I don't want the kicker core because I have a kicker no. mode. I think they are going to sell way more frames without the trainer. You think? Yeah, because that's what, you know, people like me, where if, if the V5 did get virtual shifting, I'd be like, well, maybe I'll get the frame so I don't have to, like, ride my own bike on the trainer. I don't even think they're going to sell the frame by itself. They, have they said that they're going to sell the frame? Oh, yeah, they, no, in, in the fall. In the fall, they said oh, they, they were going to sell the frame by itself. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's going to do as well as you think. I disagree. The reason why is people already have bikes. They're not going to buy a frame to get just the shifting. Yeah. See, my situation is different is I want to get my family riding indoor. And for them, I can get an adjustable bike that never leaves the trainer because my kids are not putting their bike on the trainer. Why not? That would re they First of all, they couldn't do it even if I showed them a million times and then it would be me doing it. So then that takes away the, the benefit of having a bike ready to go is you can jump on it anytime and just ride. Well, then my kids would be like, well, I want to ride. And then I got to go take their bikes apart, put it on the thing. And then when I go, then I got to take everyone's bike off. So for me and so you want to buy the frame and just have one trainer. So no yeah. one's ever going to ride at the same time well because right now my family doesn't like to ride enough to all want to ride at the same time but if you had two love... trainers if you had two trainers would you have two people riding at the same time i would definitely love to do that i would love if my kids were like hey dad i want to ride in swift with you but right now we get about 10 minutes and that's all but what would happen is i would totally buy the swift frame for like my family with my bike on the V5 for me. If you buy the frame, you're not going to get another trainer. Why don't no, you buy? Well, no, the frame comes with the trainer, the frame you, with trainer. Oh, so you're going to be the ones buying, you're going to buy it when it comes out. 
you're going to buy the one with the kicker core. Yeah, which is yeah, which actually you can buy it already apparently because I've seen pictures of it on. But yeah, I would if my family really liked to ride, I would entertain buying that, and they well, can when have. You, the when car. are they going to tell you, dude? It's teens, man. They change their mind every twenty minutes. Why don't you just get it and have it there? Yeah, and then, you, then you don't need to worry about getting the jet black thing. You're going to get the kicker core. Yeah, that's got to go to family it. council. I just can't have a trainer with a new bike showing up in the garage. It's not a new bike. It's a smart bike. Well, actually, only if it's the same color as my other bike, then my oh. wife wouldn't notice. Just but put a big, the, bright put white bike. She'd be like, where'd this thing come from? Yeah, there you go. And you've been specialized on it instead of Zwift. Paint it orange. Be like, oh, this is my Venge. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just thinking, like... If you had three trainers, could you get three people riding with you at the same time? Oh, hell yeah. Or two other want, people. I'd love it if my whole family, we'd have like one, you know, Monday night group rides with the family it would be kick ass. So would you create would you, your own meetup? Okay. So would you get the jet have my black, own TTT team, get the jet black and get the Zwift ride. Then you have your, your V5 jet black with a frame on it and you could put you could put one of the kids frames on it and the other one would be adjustable with the with the yeah. swift ride and the kicker core well the thing is that jet black frame that jet black trainer if it proves reliable so they're gonna sell it's reliable for you enough for you you reliable just reliable for kids and things like that yeah and but so apparently like you know, they've they fixed they fixed the old one so i would like to see someone retest it we need casey to race on the old jet black trainer with the new firmware because from what i've read they have uh added like temperature compensation but you don't race and you don't do events why do you care because i'm so powerful still <laughs> but then why would it matter you're not even caring about the results Dude, I need it to be accurate. I need it to be accurate. Do you really? A hundred percent. If I'm monitoring my power and my heart rate, it would kill me knowing that my trainer was not correct. It's only off what 2.5%. I heard it was like up to 20 watts at like at times. Oh, you're talking about the entire oh, the accuracy. Yes, yeah. I don't care about the two and a half percent. Two and a half percent is fine with me. I thought we were talking about how the old trainer drifted 20 watts when it got hot. Don't they all do that? No, because most of them do have temperature compensation, so they don't drift. The problem with the original Jet Black was it drifted like huge amounts. Oh, okay. Like it could be up to like 40, 50 watts wrong by the end of the race. But yeah, no, if the stated accuracy is two and a half percent, two percent i'm not really worried about that too much hmm. because for me as long as the trainer is consistently two and a half percent i'm doing erg workouts it's you know yeah, okay it's fine but if it's drifting when it gets hot yeah, yeah, that's yeah, okay. bad. yeah that's wrong then you are looking at the numbers and you care yes. yeah. well mostly like if you're doing erg workouts the numbers only matter to me you know i just want to be consistent in my workouts but you know, two and a half percent is still consistent enough. Yeah. All right. Do we have any questions? Is anyone watching this show live? There's a bunch of people watching oh. live. They were waiting around for the music and we didn't have any at the beginning of the show. We're going to have some, we're going to have some music at the end of the show. So stay tuned. And I forgot to ask this. I probably, we probably had this and I never say it. Do we have an email for people if they want to email questions to us? <laughs> totally have an email which i never say so you have to say the email i'll have to or find it i'll post it in right the... so yeah if anyone want to if, if you want to uh, comments and questions uh to the email be like oh brian never plays the music yeah i know uh oh i i don't like the host the main guy he talks too much oh that's great okay well you can talk to, to lee uh well, i'm the one that gets the emails you're going to get all the emails, yeah. Uh, what was I watching? The 
watching Casey. I think Casey was do- oh, oh Casey was doing the the my whoosh. Casey was doing my whoosh, and he jumped Kay. in again, and then he had the. Uh, the delay and he just like i'm done oh casey they, they, was they in the cycling playing. canada test event and apparently there was only four people oh and one of them was casey a fellow canadian so it wasn't it wasn't the actual qualifying race but it was a test event yeah but i mean it's the middle of summer not that many people are and it's on my I'm, I'm worried though like i hope the actual qualifying race which is in the first one is in three days. I'm hoping it has a decent turnout. We need to get Josh Peacock on again, don't we? Well, how many? Okay, so get, bring up the uh, bring up the dates. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hype friend of the show, Peacock, and cycling. Oh, I gotta find the race bible here because we can have Josh on to help promote it. Not that this show is gonna promote very much very many things, but. Uh, there's an opportunity to race for your country in Canada, at least. I bet you Tom Thrall is going to be in there, or he's probably already got a qualification. He apparently already. Yeah. Who else would be Canadian contingent contingency? I don't know. I think this is incorrect. What is it? As oh. we. For the audio only audience. So the first we're, race we're waiting, we're waiting is for Lisa. July. Are you, showing the, are you showing the website? I can't see it. No, because it's not on their website. It was in an email. Oh, that's helpful. So actually, because the only reason you could only go in, you were only invited to the qualifiers if you attended nationals. Oh. So that is probably why. The test events were open to anybody, uh-huh. but the actual world qualifiers was only if you raced nationals. And the first event is on July 16th at 2030 Eastern time. And then the second event is July 27th at 12 Eastern time. So is, uh, yeah. So guess who wouldn't be in the, in there? Lucas for Slois was in chat was in chat because he didn't want to do something which was, oh, the break. He just gave up before he even got in the race. I remember him saying that. Woosh, <clears throat> my, yeah, Dr. Weebles and my Woosh were a match made in heaven they because are. of my Woosh's physics. Oh, yeah. No, his power, he probably yeah. would do really, really well in my Woosh. Yeah, that's what like really Scott well. was saying. Yeah. Woosh was made for Dr. Yeah, Weebles because exactly. he could just like out diesel everyone yeah. yeah he he could probably do really well in this uh, the sunday race class. i was totally gonna race the national qualifiers until i read the fine print at the very bottom of the race bible and then i was like nah because canada has seven spots to go to worlds and i thought what are the chances in the middle of july or end of july nobody's gonna they're gonna get that. like a whole bunch of people racing indoor so I thought, what if I squeaked in and got like seventh? Am I on the national team? But yeah. it actually, the fine print said, oh. it's ch- ch- you can't, if you, even if you come seventh of seven, you have to come the top half of the field. Mm-hmm. So I would have, there'd have to be 14 racers for me to come seventh to be on the team. But if there's 14 people, I'm not coming seventh. Oh. I'm coming like 14th, maybe 13th. So I was like, damn it. I thought it could be like one of those guys that make it to the Olympics. He doesn't know how to swim, but he made it for swimming. (laughs) It's like my time trial yesterday. I got third place. Yeah. Out of three people. (laughs) It sounds better when you're fifth of five in nationals. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fifth in Canada. Yeah. Not this year. Last year I was fifth in Canada. Beats got a medal. He was fifth. He was fifth place out of six. There you go. There you go. If in the U.S. and your age category sounds exactly. awesome. It was awesome. Oh, I miss those races. Yeah. So, yeah, Scott, what happens is the qualifiers in September have 150 people and they narrow it down to 20 for the yeah. worlds. So that could be really, really interesting because you could get like countries that say have a dream team. What if all seven men from the U.S. get go to worlds? And, and 
a third of the world's is is USA. That could happen. Mm -hmm. Probably won't, but it probably could. Be boring. But you kind of want them to have it mixed up a bit. But. Yeah, and there are, and I the reason I think they're only picking twenty is because they're flying everyone to Abu Dhabi for Worlds, so they don't want to fly a hundred people. No, and the logistics on that is not even the not even the flight; it's the network, uh, whatever devices, trainers, all in this yeah. one area. That would be a crazy. People are like, I have to have my bike, you know. And you're like, oh, this, the trainer and all that. And then everything, uh, that's why like virtual, like I get it. Like the, the goal is to have it like on site and you're doing virtual stuff, but it's different than like, like League of Legends, the invitational or the international, where it's like, you have a row of, <clears throat> you have two row, two, whatever rows of, uh, you know, six or seven. How many people are in League of Legends? Isn't it like six? You can have six, idea. six, it's six V six or something like that. I've never played league of legends Oh, or Valorant or one of those, you know, it, it's, it's an esports, right? And you're having a chair, a desk and a PC and a monitor mouse keyboard. People, sometimes people bring their own mouse keyboard, but, uh, because of sponsorships and latency and, and their preference, but like bike trainer monitor or laptop, uh, you know, iPad or other device, Android device or something that's going to, so everyone, that's the thing is like, oh, well, this is where I, I, I'm, I differ in people who want everything the same for the athletes. I want whatever you can bring, like you bring your stuff, like it, Trek, Trek, a little Trek races on Trek bikes. They have Penarello sponsorship. They're on Penarello tires. They're not racing on other stuff. And so if you have a, if you have a PC that runs the game better and it's faster and the latency is better, you should be able to run that. And you have, maybe you have a sponsorship that's like, you know, we're a Wahoo sponsored team. We want to run Wahoo trainers or no, we're an elite sponsored team. We want to run elite stuff. Well, that's where I think the sport needs to be. The roads need to take, uh, the road is virtual. And so that's where the developer needs to play a part in in supplying the uh the proper road for people like the aso has to you know they work with the, the local municipalities to go hey you got to pave the roads for when the tour de france comes through like the route needs to have paved roads you got to make sure all the furniture that's the promoter which is kind of like the race organizer or the platform organizer you can have a race organizer and then also the uh local governments supply the roads and, and all the infrastructure. That's where it's like Zwift is the infrastructure and the promoter is whoever the promoter is. If Zwift wants to be the promoter too, that's fine. Or if Indivella wants to be the promoter as well. So that's where we should get Bjorn on. I don't know if we talked to him about it, where I, I'm for race with whatever you have if it's, if, it's, if it's verified. Performance verification for hardware across the board and then performance verification for the athlete across the board. Bjorn is here. Bjorn is here. Great. Be ready for that question, Bjorn. If you did, you get all that. Don't say, "Oh, it makes it easier." I don't want it to be easier. I want the sponsorships and I want the teams to use the equipment that they want to use. Well, it's funny. Indoor cycling is such a, especially when they have like the cameras of the riders either in their homes or on site somewhere you can get some close up footage of like, I mean, yes, the dude is on a trainer and he's on his like track, but there's a lot of time that that track is in the screen of him riding on it. Wait, what do you mean? You mean the virtual track or the, no, the real life track of that he's riding on in his trainer room. Well, that goes part they... of the verification. Yeah. That's part of the verification. If you're going to be a remote racer, a remote virtual racer, you need to be able to remote in a video that shows you on your bike full screen. If that's what they, if that's what the requirements are, like if they're like, oh, you just zoom, zoom in the zoom room so we can see you suffer. That's one thing. You know, you could change the trainer, you could be manipulated underneath. That's where like the back end sort of 
verification needs to come from the fit file and all that other stuff. I'm just saying that like, hey, if Elite has Elite Justo, uh, they're like, hey, we want to promote and we're sponsoring the Team Italy. Like Team Italy is like, because Elite is an Italian uh, manufacturer. And they're like, we want to sponsor the Team Italy team. We want them on Elite spon uh, sponsored, uh, uh, what is it? Trainers. Just like DC Rainmaker ha show went around the, the the paddocks of all the Tour de France stuff when I played that video last week of the the air conditioned cool or maybe I played that on my show. I watched that and he's like, yeah, there's teams that have these. They're sponsored by Shimano. They have to use Shimano power meters, even though everyone knows Those now suck. that they're not. There's a <laughs> discrepancy in the right crank versus the left crank, right? That's a that's an issue, but that's sort of like, hey, if if James Barnes is worked a deal or, or uh, he's on team next or whatever it's next presented by insured or whatever it's called next. And they have a Wahoo, the or Wahoo Lacole, like Wahoo Lacole, you go to an event and it's like, Oh, you gotta, you gotta ride elite trainers. Cause that's our event. No, we, we ride Wahoo trainers. Right. And then you're like, Hey, we're a trek, Like we're a Trek team or what is it? Project Echelon is a row outdoor team and an indoor team. And they're probably sponsored by let's say have the let's say they have a bike sponsor. It's like okay, well we ride this bike indoors and outdoors. Well, we want this in the game because we want that's where that's where I think the sport needs to align and get into it. But the the sort of like oh we want everyone on the same trainer. It's like I I disagree. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong in that sense. It's like no 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 you can't have different trainers. I think they work it's differently. Good, yeah. They should work differently. No, I see things. what you're saying. I think eventually it's got to lead away from everyone riding the same equipment. If all the equipment is verified, yeah, to work, and it's been verified and it's been certified, you should be able to ride on that because that is exactly it. When you're putting everyone on the exact same stuff, you are now limiting yeah sponsorship abilities. And, and if if you're a privateer, you get to choose like. Like team, or it used to be Team Sky, but now Team Ineos, Ineos Grenadiers, right? They don't have a tire sponsorship. They choose to buy Continental tires because they have t special tires that give them whatever marginal gains that they want. If you are in, but they're sponsored by Shimano, so they have to run Shimano group sets, right? But if you're like, hey, I'm a privateer e racer, I want to race on the Justo too because it's got, it's better for me. Or it does better. I I prefer it. It's got a better feel. Well, it's like, got better resistance. It's got all these things, and it makes my experience better. I'm gonna race on that. But if you're on a team that's like sponsored by Oahu, you gotta ride with you gotta ride with the team that's sponsored, right? It's like the people were having issues with the Neo, not keeping up on sprints. Yeah, if you go to Worlds and sprinting is your thing, and they're like everyone is riding a Neo, you might be like, ah, I'm at a disadvantage now because yeah. I can outspin the Neo. I want to ride. A wa my personal wahoo yeah. well you can't do that why not it's like one plus or minus one percent like is bjorn here does he want to jump on really quick bjorn can you jump on really quick can we send him a link i think he still probably has it okay jump on let's get this <laughs> let's get this question answered uh pulling people from the audience yeah, hey. into the live show yeah jump on i want to know Unheard i want to, I want to hear it otherwise he can answer it in chat but i want to know like yeah it's like you you bring up a great point of like i'm a good sprinter and i and i i've trained on my trainer to do my thing it needs to be verified okay once it goes through the verification i'm sprinting on my trainer it's like you have a back you have a main bike and you have a backup bike and there's guys that like hey i have a i have a puncture I'll swap bikes while the train while the uh, mechanic goes and he fixes the 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 fix the thing and then I want to swap back to my number one bike because I like that feel better. You can get a better feel of things. It's like oh no, you go to different roads and stuff like that. I get that, but if it's verified and you can verify things, that's where I think that's where the sport needs to be instead of like bringing everybody into like one area. Now, if the event like the UCI is sponsored by Wahoo. Right, I think the World Championships are sponsored by Wahoo, and they're like, we want every trainer to be on Wahoo trainers. Okay, I get that. Okay, then it's like you got to ride on Wahoo. Okay, but if it's like a, a satellite event where everyone is, you know, the qualifiers, you don't need to do qualifiers all on the same thing if they're verified. And then I think you should get away from the 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 global sponsorship 
outweighing an athlete's perf- preference. You getting them on? Yeah, I can't remember what the password is to her video. I remember what it is. I'll send him a message on Discord. Yeah, he's asking me in Discord. He's like, okay. what's the password? I'm like, uh... Well, go to Lamond Revolution. Could you imagine an indoor event where there was like 20 Lamond Revolutions? That would be insane. I did have, I did be a like 3,000 decibels. Yeah. Like you can't hear that. That is the loudest yeah. trainer ever. Yeah. There we go. Special guest. Okay. The question is Bjorn, hello. Can you hear us? Nope. Can't hear it. Are you on a Mac or a PC? Make sure both are both both settings are on the the microphone. There you go. There you go. All right. My, my, Welcome. My, my microphone. Bjorn, was awesome break. Yo. Yo. Welcome. Thought he's yeah. the, he's the it's hot and it's 40 degrees again. Uh, uh, you're you're in the nothing interior, aren't you? It's only like 28 here today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Canada complaining hard. about heat. Okay. What is the what is the benefit of having all of the same trainers? Okay, so a, a quick little intro for people that don't know Bjorn. Bjorn uh, is a performance verification. He's a coach, but he's also he's also like the the top person, the top person for like virtual per- performance verification and making a lot of noise in the background is driving me nuts. But no, it's all right. No, you're shaking your you're shaking your 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 yeah. microphone. Uh, so my question is. What's the, what's the, be- besides the sponsorship, what's the benefit of all the athletes on site having the same equipment? On site. On site. Let's say you have 20 athletes or 40 athletes in an arena and you're like, hey, everyone's riding the Wahoo Kicker V6 and everyone's going to be connected to the same thing. Everyone's on iPads or whatever it is. Everyone's on the same platform and everyone's got the same stuff. And it's just, a, oh, it's just about the athletes. What is the benefit of that? And what could be the disadvantage of that? The mechanical functioning of the trainer is the same because every trainer works a little different. Belt driven versus no belt driven. Um, Resistance load is different from different manufacturers or even different trainers from the same manufacturer. And power measurement slash power algorithm is also different based on manufacturer and trainer. Okay, so that's so, a benefit, or is that a negative? Well, it's a benefit if everybody's on the same. Because your your front end having to to verify everything because you verify. Okay, let me go back. Do you does your you and your team, if you would, if you do do it, or if you would virtually do it, you you certify each trainer before they were sent out for the worlds, or is that or is that the we manufacturer? Not, we, not, we we haven't touched anything for worlds in this regard. In this first one, but what about the last worlds? Because I think last worlds, everyone got shipped the kicker last, V6. Yes. So first worlds, everybody was on Tax Neos two. The two T wasn't out yet. Uh, then it was two times the Wahoo, I think five, and then six. Uh, Wahoo sent the trainers straight to the riders, and there was a sponsorship with Wahoo and the UCI. Okay, so, that I understand. Yeah, so. Wahoo sent them straight to the athletes. Then the athletes had that period to use the trainers, test the trainers basically, and do a pre-verification um, test on it. And yeah, so we were able to use the data coming from the specific trainer they would use at Worlds and then verify the data against this trainer. But of course, there was a significant amount of athletes who used the same model brand trainer already before who experienced significant differences from the one shipped from Wahoo to versus the one they already have been using previously at home. Okay. And this goes into, I think, I don't know if you listened to the uh, last podcast, what is uh, the virtual Velo podcast where they had the interview with the Purdue folks 
Purdue University. All oh, the ones that are doing the the whole, the, the whole like, yeah, the standardization yeah, the for standardization. Uh, for, yeah for the trainers and also for words. Basically, they are actually have to have the really difficult task to identify twenty trainers or plus extras for words, which all fall within the same small spectrum of accuracy and precision. Okay, so I got to listen to that. We got to listen to that. So That's yeah, homework for us. You, you can listen to it and basically the straight answer is it's not easy to... Well, of course even, it's not easy. Even, even from the same manufacturer and model right. to find something which all falls within a small, small percentage. Okay, are there yeah. steps for anti-tampering? Bef when you so when you train when you did the the neo two t or whatever it was and you did yeah. the whatever the next the next one did you do like anti tampering sorry like you put like seals on it so like if you break the seal don't tamper it don't do anything that would be like a hardware tampering uh, so what what happened was the and can you share any of this? Yeah, this yeah like that's, no, that's okay, fine. Yeah, no, I don't want to well, ask you something. You're like, no, I can't. And writers were brought up, made aware of this with Wahoo, for example, that. Um, they had to connect the trainer to the Wi-Fi, which means the trainer through the Wi-Fi connection would always send constant updates and signals through to Wahoo. Wahoo would Wahoo could collect back all background data from oh, the so trainers. So they got all the MAC addresses and they were yeah, all they yeah, were monitoring yeah, each one. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. We, we could request any of this data. Yeah, I got you. Okay. And if, if they had a strong Wahoo, if their Wi-Fi connection dropped or lost packets, yeah, that would then be scrutinized as well. Yes, to a okay. certain extent, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, but at the end, this is the biggest thing which holds the sport back right now is, is the, 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 the equipment, the equipment, yeah. because, I mean, I was asked what what is um, what is an accurate trainer what is an esports ready trainer and you know my answer for this was the trainer has to reproduce power at 0 0.01 hertz per newton meter accuracy and less than one watt systematic error at 1000 watts that's that's tight that <laughs> would be an esports ready trainer and so you, did the uh, manufacturers like Wahoo, when they're sending trainers to competitors, are they cherry picking trainers? Like, are they testing them to make sure that they're all within like as close as absolute possible to each other they, and sending out those ones? I, I assume they all just go to the standard factory um, checks before they are sent out. Hmm. Um, yeah. And I wonder how this is going to work with the UCI building and developing that trainer tester machine through the university you mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. university of purdue yeah i mean yeah. i mean yeah i mean if you listen to this the university they have done a lot of standardization and testing for other equipment i think swimsuits was one of those as well um, where standard uh, set swimsuit as, as standard for swimsuits uh, needed to be developed, what athletes can wear in regards to what type of material it can be in the can the can the race suit be made of, and all this type of stuff. So, so they are basically produced pushing towards this that they are able to provide this to all the manufacturers. Um, but I think from the point of esports racing, I think the manufacturer has to step it up and okay just produce a better trainer. Well, they're good trainers. Yeah, You're, we're just we're just saying we want for the elite athletes or elite events, we need elite trainers. Mm -hmm. So, like a so like uh, what is it? Uh, you get like the best from the manufacturing because, like, a, a good example or at least the graphics cards. Graphics well, cards do this. If you're going for like an overclocking world, they're cherry picked the PCB that can handle the most right. power. So off here, here, here's what you're looking for. So if I take the example cross country skiing, cross country ski racers, they don't buy a, or get a standard ski coming, which would be sold through a shop. The ski racers get factory picked skis, which means they have a team of techs which go to the factories and pick specifically each ski for the racer based on specific specs. But so, okay, then my question goes back to 
why can't athletes choose the trainer they want? Uh, aside from the, yeah. the, the, the overall sponsorship. You mean but if you're like, worlds, yeah. Yeah. For worlds is like, yeah. if Wahoo says, Hey, we're sponsoring it, you got to ride our trainers. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. But if you're like, Hey, we're doing a satellite event or a qualifier yeah. and they're, and somebody has the resources yeah. and goes, I got a Justo and I have a kicker and I have a hammer, whatever version, they're all fall under a line, the thing, and I do better on the Justo, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that just sort of game? You're just, you're just trying, you just have the resources to do that, to, to be better on it. And then the verification that you guys would then say would be like, oh, well, this athlete is this athlete, and they're just using the equipment that they feel mm -hmm. better for because it falls in line. It's not that they're 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 gaming the system they're not trying to manipulate the system by like different firmware it's like if yeah. you're on the the stop thing it's like this trainer works best for me like the sprinter and uh example that that lee brought up yeah. is that is that kind of what we're yeah. right now yeah well from our point with the verification part of it we have verified athletes throughout seasons of racing where they switch trainers okay yeah yeah and they, that's okay that there, there's no there's no question yeah. you're just like because there, let's say there was five trainers approved for the reason for the season of racing and halfway through the season or even at the beginning of the season they submitted two tests from two different trainers right just because they say this trainer suits me better for climbing and this one suits me better for a flat type race so then you as the verification stand let's say you were on the consortium for like verification and you talk to all the manufacturers and they're like the next phase would be like hey when things are coming, things are off the testing. Can we slot in the, the, the like elite level verification? And you go, hey, this is sort of this fits in that world. This fits in that sort of that range of this is this is can go and be sold at any store. But it, if if somebody needed this to pull for a, a a premier event, this would be one that we would be that would be good to go because we have that data coming off the manufacturing and all the testing. That would be but like we, upstream, well, right? It would be upstream, yeah. If the trainer already produced some data, let's say from the manufacturer, and this data is provided just from this trainer, and before the trainer goes on the shelf, let's say gets the stamp. Yeah, it gets like a behind-the-scenes stamp to yeah, go. Hey, something. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, this is you know, oh, we have to find these like the diamonds yeah. in the rough. Yeah. And you yeah. go, hey, whatever, or. These are sort of like you said with the cross country skis. Cause I was thinking of uh, another example, like uh, what's his name? Uh, Josh Portner from Silka. Mm -hmm. He, when he does his thing, like he's hired as a consultant for pro teams. And he was like, he found lower resistance for like these continental tires or mm -hmm. some tire yeah. company, like Victoria. And it was like the serial number, like aligned, like this one manufacturer, this one plant kicked out the ones that were the lowest resistance and so they were just like hey we want these from this and they yeah. reached out to Victor victoria and got it or something well like it's, yeah i mean the pros at the tour they don't ride they don't race factory tires they all race uh, they yeah, don't yeah. race stock tires they race factory tires mountain bike racing is the same yeah. they race they race a different strat pattern pattern and and a bunch of other stuff and it's none of the pros on the highest level of the sport they race use the stuff which you and me can buy in the store right it's all custom and different levels different you know built yeah it's squeezing out the whatever yeah. marginal gains yeah and exactly. so that's the future and i did we just go back to I mean, that's that's the future we believe that this is part of the future of the sport is like hey if you if you want to show up to an event if they're on if they're on site or this purdue which i got to listen to the podcast uh the virtual velo shout out to them for yeah. the purdue thing are they are they testing the trainer and then calibrating it with their own firm, like UCI or Purdue sanctioned firmware of that manufacturer so that it aligns with this sort of like, Hey, it came off the, it came off the manufacturing line this way, but we've added our firmware that makes it the way it is. No, I think what they're just doing is they're verifying whether what the, what the factory is saying is true. So they're oh, not they're adding any firmware. Oh, oh yeah, they're not. What? Yeah, so they put the trainer on their test machine and the test machine runs through like a two to three hour test protocol and it can tell with the sensors of the, you know, with wattage and everything on an electric yeah. motor, you can tell pretty much I'm inputting 500 watts, but the trainer is telling me that it's getting 450. 
well, then you know there's like a level of accuracy. So it's just verifying. So like if Wahoo says, oh, this trainer is 1%, you send it to the UCI and Purdue, and they're like, well, no, actually, this is like 1.75%. Oh, like it's okay. not, you know. They, you, yeah, they want to provide for world championships an X number of trainers, which all are exactly falling in the same range. Got it. And there's really tight margin, tight range or whatever. Yeah, so they plus, can give. Plus, plus they're adding encryption protocols or have developed an encryption protocol, which creates a higher standard to. So then they're to giving. Prevent, to prevent cheating from the 20 trainers well. that are yeah. all measuring at 1% or yeah. 1.01 yeah, or, or 0.95 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Because, okay. yeah, like when a company states it's plus or minus 2.5%, well, one guy could get a 2.5%. Plus, another guy could get a minus two and a half percent, but it's still within the plus or minus. But five percent at three hundred watts is a decent, you know, chunk of wattage. Mm -hmm. Where the UCI would test trainers, and they would basically be cherry picked and said, "These are the ones we're using for worlds. They are all exactly one percent, or close, like to a percentage of what they're, you know, requiring." Okay. So then why wouldn't smart bikes be the reason? Why wouldn't we go to a smart bikes? So that there's no shifting, there's no electronic groups, there's no chain. There's just, there's just like, let's just make it all, or is that not, is that like going overboard? Cause people are comfortable with their bike and you're like, Hey, you're coming to, a, you're coming to this event. You're doing this thing. Why wouldn't a smart bike be yeah. the, the I see. better? Yeah, I mean, I think the examples have been there. If you take either Olympic event last year, they were all on a what what, what bike. I mean, there was mm -hmm. issues with, with connection problems and so on, but they used all the what bikes. And I believe one of the national championships, I think the Danish national championships, they had a really interesting broadcast. Everybody in the same. No, it was Australia. The Australian national championships. There's, mm -hmm. there's, if, if you if you Google it, you find some some good YouTube stream for it. Um, they had everybody at the same location with huge screens set up, like massive yeah, screens, yeah. and they were all on a wild kicker bike, all on the same bikes, and uh, just rode it from there. But you, you can have the same problems what you have with the trainer from the point of uh, variation from Model 1 to Model 10. Have you yeah. had, so at Worlds, yeah. uh, so hypothetically, yeah. that this Worlds that's on site, and they have as much time as they possibly can get, do you think you can get all of the same trainer range for everybody? It's a good question. I mean, Elite has to probably, I have no idea. I, I, I assume Elite will have to ship, like my guess right now is Elite will have to ship them 200 trainers and out of 200 trainers they have to find. The 20 out of that or however maybe, many. Maybe 30 just to have some extras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or maybe they need 40 because people have to want, I have no idea if, how the format and how the, uh, how the stuff is all working. But um, I mean, Elite added, the one thing Elite added direct connect as well. So I assume everything will be run through Wi-Fi or direct connection as well. Um, that's also probably where the encryption is coming from because uh, a wireless encryption is a lot harder than an encryption through a, through a direct connection. So I'd, I'd feel yeah. like a direct ethernet connection would solve a lot of these issues. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every manuf main manufacturer, Elite, Wahoo, Garmin Tax, they have gone this route that each trainer has offered the ethernet direct connection. Um, can you mandate for elite racing direct connection? Most riders are using these trainers now, which have this feature. And based on the list allowable, if you take the Sunday Race Club or let's call say the Swift Racing Leagues or World Series in the fall, they will have they have restrictions based on what model and what um, from what manufacturers riders can use, and all of those are direct connect. Uh, units maybe except for some of the smart bikes so you probably could mandate direct connection for any of those races as well so what's the benefit of encryption just so well, you can get uh, yeah, out, you, on the back end yeah you get made on well and nobody can hacks into the system okay because you could have somebody stand in the 
watching and, and intermediate and help, help, help you out in some form of a way, you know? Okay. Um, but the platform could also block this, this intermediator from their back end as well. So do you mean the, the platform of the event? Well, the, I think you said it's the, it's the roads, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, people, the municipalities yeah. that yeah. control the road. Yeah, yeah exactly. The, we got that listen earlier. You said the roads. Yeah, 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 You're correct. Yeah, right. The roads, not the right. not the organizer in this case, because yeah, the yeah. organizer okay. is UCI. Good. So. I'm glad you. But, but they glad probably you. should be able to do this as well. Okay. Um, yeah, which I think yeah, I discovered one of the platforms actually does it already in game, which was interesting. So, okay. Do you see that this is this in the future happening? Is there progress? Is it slow or is there no movement on I the? Yeah. I think there's, yeah, I think there's progress. There's progress, I think, from every platform moving this platform, direction. hardware manufacturer, like trainer, man, yeah. all these, every, all facets. It's just some are slower yeah. than the others. But so the, the, I think no... hardware trainer manufacturers, I think this needs to be more happening, but hopefully going into the fall. We can help them a little bit more to understand things. I don't think it's a fast moving process of what's necessary, but uh, I'm hoping that I get to talk to the main manufacturers a little bit again once all this stuff has happened for them and they are, they, you know, they can relax a little bit with world championships and, yeah. and racing has started again. But it always, I, it, it always depends what's on their radar and what's on their, you know, scope for right. for production, you know, are they will to produce something which is made for the top two percent of users yes. for yeah, this yeah. equipment? Are they will to go this way? Is 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 in is this in is a research and development investment for them worth it for the amount of people actually going to use it and buy it? That's yeah, yeah. you know that's what it comes down to. It's yeah it's the the what is ever the uh if they, if they results say, on investment yeah, so they invest in this they invest in this two percent yeah is that trickle down kind of like uh, i just popped yeah. in my head like golfers yeah or tennis players like high, high elite tennis players yeah. are sponsored by a tennis racket or a yeah. golf club and it's like well the casual fan watches their pro athlete yeah. play on this thing i want to get to what they're on which is yeah. different because like pro clubs or pro rackets well they, you can kind of they're kind of the same the trainer is like, Hey, I want to, I want to, I like the, Hey, James Barnes races. And I like the way he races and he's on a, whatever, I don't know, whatever he's on. That's what I want to get because that mm -hmm. sort of thing, because the company and the athlete are using it. Right. Yeah, it's my, it's at the end, it comes down to marketing. I mean, marketing, it, yeah, yeah. and I, I posted it in the chat when we, we were listening and you were talking about the pro teams and, you know, little track example, the Swift did a great job when they brought in movie star. Right. You know, yeah, movies, yeah. movie star has created a full on esports team. They created a tryout and all this stuff where, where they found the, from their point, the best suited athletes for their team, equipped the riders with the full gear for what the pro team had. So they got a bike. They got to go to the training camps, got to work with all the nutrition um, team uh, coaches. Yeah. and and so on and they also got the top end elite trainer for racing virtual racing so and at the end they were able to display this on their streams and if you actually google movie star movie star is not just the cycling team and the esports team they actually have a full-on esports video game team as well yeah so movie male star and is, female right yeah movie star is big in esports video yeah, yeah. i remember so they, they brought in yeah yeah so they, were... they actually uh, managed to bring this over into the cycling as well because they have a cycling team as well and i hope they will continue with this and are not uh, not discouraged from from things splitting into different platforms in all this way all this direction because so i think if all the if, if all these different platforms do what they are best at from the point what they can offer the elite racers i think the sport can can thrive pretty good and racers can race on different platforms, but you want to feature these teams on every platform. Yeah. How they should be featured. And, uh, you know, movie star should be featured in, in their movie star kits on their Canyon bikes in game. Plus, plus, um, visually when they are brought onto the stream 
um, in front of their webcam at home. And, and the same with any other team which might be out there. Do you see there's a life for the virtual teams, virtual only teams? Like the, uh, who's a good example? Like Next. Yeah. Next and uh, who's the other? Wahoo Lacole. Or does Wahoo Lacole have an outdoor team? I don't think so. They probably do something outdoors. But well, but yeah. I know there's one smaller American team, Project Echelon. The guys, you know, the guys from. Uh, yeah, it takes the Cyrus guys. Saris, yeah. Yeah, Saris guys. I mean, they're, yeah. but they are, I mean, Saris is on a hard, in the harder position because they are sponsored by Saris, which doesn't provide a trainer which falls within the accuracy standards, let's say. Yes. So the trainer is not allowed in any of the races. Um, but they can train on them. Correct. Yeah. But they have to race on another one. Yeah, which, which you know, Saris has to understand. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, or they can work on building something better as well. Um, but yeah, for the virtual, is there, is there, I think the virtual only teams, they, and using the example, I think Kenyon, when Kenyon really became bigger using with Lionel and yeah. Ollie and Alex West back in the days, Reese really promoted it and got Kenyon on board. He was working also for Kenyon, I think, at this point. But he got Kenyon fully on board and, and got Wahoo on board, plus he got InfoCrank as a, as a power meter on board. So he mm. created this whole infrastructure for the riders, for the team, to get all the gear, plus in the games, all they would be all riding on the Kenyon bikes. Um, yeah, and they were, they, were, they were featured this way, and I think there's potential there, but again, it needs to be... It needs to be... Uh, cross-platform scene if, if one platform provides the support for the riders but the other platform doesn't or for the team then yeah, agreed then the sport is that's, dis where, yeah. that's a disconnect in there that's a yeah, disconnect yeah. and and as a sponsor i would wonder then okay why we only want you guys to raise on a platform where you get this get where we get as a sponsor also our product in game and and riders can watch it or can copy it or can purchase the jersey we're using or can do other things um but if on a different platform it's not offered then as a sponsor i wouldn't be interested yeah that's the that's the thing is is the municipality yeah <laughs> controls the majority of stuff yeah. Because they get to say, "Oh, in our town, you can't you can't buy white cars," or like the Spanish villages that you can you yeah. can't paint your house other any other color than white. Yeah, That's maybe. It, yeah, I mean, at the end, it would be just would be good if you take the example where you just have blank frames. Does the frame really need to look like the outside frame? to the matching copy you just have blank frames and the frame can be customized from the teams with logos and all this stuff yeah same with jerseys um give use a template and have the teams create the template for the for yeah the well, riders that, to use for, that goes yeah. that goes back to the olympics or the uci yeah sort of governing which would be like a federal yeah sort of governance to go hey to have a whatever pro or elite, whatever it is virtually, every yeah. platform has to align with that if you're going to be involved with our events. Yeah. And then there's going to be ones that don't want to be, you know, like not everything is in the world tour. Yeah. There's, no, no, no. there's races that are not in the world tour and they yeah. have different, they choose who they want to show up. Yeah. When you, so, I mean, UCI again has different rules than the Olympics. Olympics, it's a lot harder with sponsorships and how sponsor logos need to be displayed and all this type of stuff. I mean, that's once, once the Olympics esports, I don't know if you, you guys, I mean, I know you, Brian, you read the, read the thing about the Olympic announcement that the eSports Olympics will be in Saudi Arabia in 2025. Um, and 2025 it was? I think 20 or 6, 26. I don't know. I so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Anyways, the IOC announced that they will have eSports e only. eSports only yeah, Olympics. Not, so yeah. they're, not, they're not bringing in the, yeah, the yeah. sports into into the regular Olympics games and they want to work with the governance bodies who are already providing the esports and were featured last year at the, the Olympic, uh, 
virtual Olympics in Singapore, the, the eSports Olympics in Singapore. But yeah, if you use this and they follow the same Olympic rules in regards to sponsorships, then Olympic sponsors can be displayed, but everything else needs to be probably covered up. Yeah. So riders who will be attending this live, it will be probably live attendance, but if there's qualification pathways and all this type of stuff going on again, then sponsorship stuff might not be allowed to be displayed again. Right. Except, it's... except the bike brand, but then on the bike, man, on the bike, it also has to do, does the logo fit? In the, isn't in the right size and all this type of stuff, you know, yeah, yeah. Olympic stuff becomes really difficult with sponsor placement and logos for everything. So, yeah. Um, but that's there you see how big the money, how important money is with this whole equation for the municipalities and for the organizers and the governance and all this type of stuff. Yeah. But that's the future, right? Right. Right. Which is you're working towards it. We're working, we're working it, yeah. towards it. I'm not, I'm working to get annulled. That's what I'm working on. How do I get annulled again? Just, just disconnect your heart rate. No, no, I wasn't <laughs> disconnecting my heart rate. It was not sending my, my dual data. Oh yeah. It's right. being the last rider <laughs> yeah. in the event who was like 12 minutes behind everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> That's how you get annulled. But you got flagged. So, <laughs> Hey, content yeah. creation. Yeah. Well, uh, but yeah, I mean, from our, from me, from our end, we are fully working and pushing it hard. I mean, for me and my team and myself, we are fully working and pushing hard to completely be independent, seen as the verification body. Good. Um, if it's work we do, let's say we do for Indie Velo, if it's the work we will do hopefully for Swift in the fall, and I'm open to do work for my Boosh or the UCI for World Championships or WADA or the ITA, whoever. Yeah, whoever comes Most knocking. Good. Yeah, because your your whole your whole thing is yeah. to be clear and transparent about yeah. fairness yeah. and governing the governing the racing. Yeah, so that it's fair to the to the competitors and fair to the organizers and fair to the promoters and every and the fans. That's the thing is like clean sport to for lack yeah. of a better term. Yeah and, yeah, and from this point, we have fully pushed, and I mean, my team had meetings for it, but we have like fully for now, from this point on, like we are really just pushing pure independence right now. We have set up systems now where we are just purely running everything uh, on our end. And uh, yeah. Okay, final final question, because we're going to get out of here. And thanks for coming question on. Question from the sure. audience is if you're wearing a Walmart shirt. <laughs> yes. Me? Yeah. Yes. No, because no, of no. the. <laughs> no, no, no. no. It's so good. Sorry. No. Oh, that's awesome. I like it. <laughs> oh, that's good. This is a this is a uh, a Sophie. It's a yeah. giraffe. It's the tooth tooth. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah, we yeah, had one. one. So my we got one for our uh, one of my teammates. Uh, he's a new uh, whatever baby new baby in June, and I was like, oh, I like Sophie because I think it's a nice gift and it's cute. Yeah. I asked my wife to find me a shirt and she found me one that's like a 60th, a 60th anniversary. So she found me like a boot. I don't know if this is real or a bootleg, whatever, but, but it's the Sophie. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so it looks kind of like, but it, yeah, Walmart. No. Uh, final question. As I get derailed, what was it? Oh my goodness. It was, it was about the, Oh, let me, uh, Ah, yeah, yeah. It was about the future of this future. Uh, oh, F do you see a future of verification uh, being handled virtually? Like you can, you can do verification from remote, like you you would do for most qualifiers and all the other things, and you don't have to have the on-site thing. Or is it you need to have it on-site? To have to be as comfortable with the athletes and the verification and the hardware of verification, all that stuff. So you mean if the that the event doesn't have to be live, the final. Correct. Interview. Yeah. So the way how we had it already over the last three years. Yes. Yeah, but at a higher standard. Uh, at a higher standard, yes. I think yes, it's plausible. It's plausible. Okay. So, and yeah. everyone, and that's the thing as we talked about this earlier is you see progress, you see that happening. You see a future for that. Yes, but it will be not happening overnight. Yeah. Okay. No. no, not overnight, but yeah. there is, all the pieces have to fall into place and they're, they look like they're falling into place. They're just a little slow. 
Right, right. I mean, Olymp yeah, Olympic esports games, if they continue, they want to have some live, I assume, people to go in a live location. UCI World Championships will probably continue also to be in a live venue and uh, everybody at the same location just because it would draw some attraction and uh, yeah to the to the event i mean i if i would be the, the uci i would always put this event on at the same time as the let's see uci road event is you know there's already thousands of people watching there you know put this yeah. on there or put it on a big stage you don't need to if if the trainers are set up with wire connection and all this stuff you don't have to worry about dropouts and all this this stuff and have have some features in a big stadium on a stage you know with a big dome coming down from the top and like the esports stadiums are and off you go i mean <laughs> but you yeah it could could happen at, at some big event already but uh, from the point of other events but high scale racing, not everything needs to go live venue. I think there's uh, the future for creating high credible racing without it being live and spending a lot of money. Okay. I have another final question. Sorry. Besides cycling, what would, what have they announced this at the, the, the official esports Olympics? Is it like rowing? virtual rowing, virtual running, and then a virtual triathlon or is it, and they're cycling that are sweat, yeah. that are sweat equity. There's yeah, other yeah. ones that sit uh, keyboard mountain, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. like Valorant, all stuff, but like the sweat equity events, like what other ones that, that could exist? IOC announces Olympic esports games to be hosted in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a uh, recent announcement. And do they announce the events? Uh, we are fortunate to be able to work with the Saudi National Olympic Committee. Expertise in the field of esports with all its stakeholders, um, gender equally, and then it said the world will have an open invitation. Since 2018. We're going to have you come on and read our questions. Yeah. So when we get an email, you just read them for That's us. That's fine. For the audio on audio only audience, yeah, they probably cool. haven't announced the, uh, the, the no, but they yet. said about um, they said about what type of direction they want to go with the okay um, with the sports. There is, the IOC has already emphasized that international federations already engaged in an e version of their sport that is considered for inclusion in the Olympic esports games will be the IOC's first go-to partners. The same will be true for national Olympic committees that already include esports in their activities. Okay. I will just post it in the chat so this way people can. Thank you. Read it and play with there it. There you go. All right. We're going to get out of here, but did you hear the beginning of the show? Ruby. You've been doing a lot of Ruby. Yeah. I just have been writing i've been sick so i needed something to write easy all right well yeah. let's keep moving yeah that's how you gain weight or depends on depends on what you're eating too but uh <laughs> yarn thanks for popping in thanks Lee. Guys. yes thank you bye that was, that was cool later play the music yes or you got more stuff nope i got nothing uh, we went good. through well we do have some other stuff, but it's an hour and 38 minutes in, and we'll yeah, save yeah. that for yeah, next yeah. week. Email. What's our email? Do you know what it is? <laughs> I, I posted it in chat. It's the spincast cycling show at gmail.com. There you go. The, the, the spincast cycling show, all spelled out. Yep. All spelled at out. Gmail.com. Play the music, Lee. Music is playing. No, oh, unfortunately, I hear Fight Wizard, there is no music. There may be one day. You can sing music. Yeah, just it's in your head. Oh, I hear music. Oh, I hear it. It's right there. All right. That's uh, it. Goodbye. Have a good Thanks night, everyone. everyone. Take care, everybody.